Hey, uh, was there any problem last night? Yes. I agree. It was funny. This right up here? Okay. So it says, find the area of each shaded sector. All right. So in this case, for number eight, we're just talking about that 37 degree section, correct? So it's just area equals pi times 19 squared times. So now just type it on your calculator, 19 squared times 37 over 360, math, enter, enter. And tell me what that answer is, someone. No, no, no. Fraction. Thank you. Perfect. Anybody else want to discuss anything? All right, those are usually common questions on standardized tests. All right, even uh, at a younger uh, level, because they think kids should be able to see it's just a fractional part of the whole thing. All right, so they feel you should be able to answer this question without knowing the particular formula. All right. Any questions? All right. Let's let's uh, quickly go to eleven point four then. All right. Now this is the one um, that is kind of annoying. All right. So um, again, some of these are easier than others. All right. They have. A formula um, that I really do not use, um, and I'll explain to you why. Um, they say that the area of a regular polygon is one half the perimeter times the apophysis. All right, now we're getting there. All right, or you can just read on your own. It explains it right there. All right. So, again, a apothem is just, a, in my opinion, a fancy word for saying the height. All right. But, um, so what we're doing today is we're trying to demonstrate how you can find the area of any regular polygon. All right. Now, for me personally, when um, I was introduced to this formula, I was like, what is the point of the formula? You should just be able to say that a regular pentagon, and hopefully you'll agree with me, a regular pentagon is made up of five triangles. Exactly. So you find the area of what? One triangle and multiply by five. So listen to me, please. All right. I, I don't understand why they would do that. All right. Now, I understand the formula, and the formula is very is completely accurate. However, I, I just know that memorizing formulas uh, is not something that's all that important if you can come up with a solution on your own. Everybody with me on that? All right. So if I said find the area of a regular hexagon, you would just say break the hexagon down into what? Six triangles. Find the area of one triangle and multiply by six. All right, that's how we're going to approach these problems. All right, and it's very, very easy. All right, now some of them pay even try, for example, look at number three. What is the answer to number three? 225. Exactly. So they're trying to make it even more difficult by asking you to come up and use that formula. All right. So I would never make you do that, 
all right? The area of a square is simply 225 inches square. Oh. Everybody see that? All right, there, there's no reason, again, there's no reason to use a formula that makes the problem more complicated, all right? So now I want to go back to number one. All right, so again, on question number one, I'm not using one half the perimeter times the apartment. All right, I'm simply saying the area is one half base times height. And because it's an equilateral triangle, I know that it's one half times 14 times what? Let's see who's going to remember back. Wow, thank you very much. Seven radical three. Now, how do we know it was seven radical three? Because it is a equilateral triangle. So the starting line counts as 14. And then the right side is the total distance. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It is simply a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, again, all right, I, I, I always try to tell kids that that may or may not stick with you, and that's perfectly fine. I don't even care, all right? But what I would like you to be able to do is I would like you to be able to draw the altitude in, right? And because it's regular, that means all the sides and all the angles are equal. If the sides are equal, that means that's 14, that's 14, that's 60, that's 60, that's 30, and that's 30. All right? So it appears from here, all right, it appears that this becomes a 7 because it's bisected. So down to its most basic form, you now could do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Right? Or you could just go ahead and do, hey, I know the rules of the 30, 60, 90. Or, hey, I know trig. I can easily find that side using trig. All right? Now, the problem with using trig is generally on standardized tests, they leave it as a radical 3. Everybody with me? All right? So if you're allowed to use a calculator, you'd have to convert all the answers. All right? Hopefully you're understanding what I'm saying. So the height has to be 7 radical 3. Yes, sir. Because it's a regular. You with me? That's what the description is. A regular polygon. Maybe I didn't say that clearly. Regular just means all sides are the same and all angles are the same. So everything in here is regular. All the sides are the same and all the angles are the same. Do we agree with that? All right. So why would we make something more complicated? We shouldn't. All right. So now I'm just going to basically go through these, and, and I'm asking you, please just listen carefully. All right, I'm going to have to review with you all the trig, because they don't all work out to be perfect. All right, we're going to have to use some trig, all right, which is important. All right? On the first one, if you could just explain the first one. If, if, well, you could use tangent, right, because you're missing... So look, there's there's a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna review with you. Yeah, it doesn't there's small right you said we because we know both angles, it, remember trig it depended upon what function you use depends on what, what angle you're looking at. Alright, that's what we're gonna be reviewing. So it's like by the size of the rectangle. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Alright. But we won't have to worry about the angles because we can easily calculate the angles. All right. Now, what do I mean by that? All right. So let's review. Let's say we forgot the measure of an interior angle of n minus 2 divided by or n minus 2 times 180 divided by n. You could also say the absolute quickest way is to take 360 divided by the number of sides and subtract from 180. All right. So there's so many options to figure it out. Let me refresh you. All right. There is an exterior angle. All right, does everybody remember the exterior angle is 360 divided by the number of sides? So 360 divided by 5 is 72. So this angle right here is what? 108. This angle over here is what? 108. All right, come on, I'm just showing you a variety of ways because for some reason 
Kids get to this section of the test, they get nervous and forget everything. And I'm just simply trying to show, show you, you can be creative. There's so many ways to get the answers. All right? Now, another opportunity is for to draw this right here. How many degrees in a circle? 360. How many triangles on the interior are we creating? Five. Five, because it's a pentagon. It doesn't matter. Five. All right, so what's 360 divided by 5? 72. So we know that this angle right here is also 72 degrees. Everybody good with that? When I draw the altitude down, what happened to the altitude? Bisected. It bisected. Thank you very much. So that's 36. Then this 10 inches is better if I erase the 10 inches. Try to erase the 10 inches. And now I'm going to make it 5. And then I think you can see it clearly. So this right here is 5. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because the thing I need is the base and the height. Right? So I wish everybody would be able to write down on their paper A equals 5 times 1 half times 10. And I am missing the what? The height. Now, again, I have never heard anybody say a pop ever, on any standardized test, ever. So the word is not necessary, in my opinion. All right? But don't be confused. A pop is another name for height. All right? And actually, its definition is from the center of your polygon to the side of the polygon. All right? That's called the apophis. Look at the radius of a polygon. Now, actually, that's not bad, but listen to me. You're almost. This actually right here is technically called the radius of the polygon. Well, no, because that's the inscribed. So what I could do is, I, I don't feel like drawing the circle in there, but I can. Beautiful. That's exactly correct. Where it goes from the vertex of the polygon to the center of the polygon. Right, right. And, and the apothem is from the center to the side of the polygon. All right. But again, like I said, I don't care about the word apothem. I've never heard it used. Um, the first time was when we're using this formula. But to me, I don't even use it because I simply look at that and say there's just five triangles that are equal. Right? Uh, the area of this pentagon is five times one half times ten. And now we're in the process of finding the height. All right? So the height is this guy right here. All right? Which we said now we need to use some trig. Right? So, again, remember what I told you. Very good. Very good. All right? So, again, I always tell kids to highlight the angle and the two sides. And with respect to that angle... 5 is the opposite, and H is the adjacent. So we would use tan, all right? Or we'd use tangent. So we're going to say the tangent of 36 is equal to 5 over H. So the height is equal to 5 tangent 36, all right? And so tell me what that answer is. All right, so now you take that answer that's on your calculator, multiply it by 10, divide it by 2, multiply it by 5. And so you can tell me the area is approximately 90.82. All right. Now, again, listen, I every year I say, wow, I, I personally just think this is super easy. All right, super easy. Um. All right, and trust me, we're going to do another one. All right, we're going to do all of them on this page. All right, now, um, oftentimes they will give you the radius, and the radius is not important. Right, everybody with me? 
because you need the base and you need the height. The radius is uh, neither one of those. All right. Why is that? But it's the shape that we can say. It's a hexagon. You agree? So look, he's he is correct, but the the idea is for you to be able to tell me why. That's pointing to the height. 360 divided by. You mean this? Yeah. Hexagon, right? I'm doing number four. You and me? That's okay. All right. But now, again, listen to me now. I said earlier I gave you lots of ways to try to figure out the angles if you forget something. Right now, here's how you should be doing it, though. All right. You always take the number of sides divided by 360. That gives you the interior angle. Right? In other words, this angle right here, that's 60, 60, 60. You with me on this? Then this has to be what? 30. And if that's 90, that makes a what? 30, 60, All right. So listen, if you want to, the hexagon is the one that's easy because it creates a 30, 60, <laughs> Wait a minute now. This right here would be five. Yeah. Yeah. So this would also be what? So this would be what? Ten. The hypotenuse is also what? Ten. That's what it is. An equilateral triangle. Very good. So now you just say area equals how many triangles? Six times one half. What's the base? And what's the height? Five radical three. Now again, if you're using radicals, you leave it as a radical. All right. So in this case, we're just going to say what? Yep, 150 radical three centimeters square. Right. Why now? That's to me very simple. Very very simple. Let me help her. First of all, let's talk about this just to make sure I'm correct. That's the number of triangles. One half. The base of the triangle is 10, which is a common mistake. You with me? Because it looks like I've divided, but I haven't, right? This is dividing. That's the base and the height. Do you agree? So the base is 10 and the height is 5 right from 3. You all set now? I, but no. Okay. Just to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. Area equals 6 times 1 half base times height. That is the number of triangles in that hexagon. This is the area of each one of those triangles. So, 6 times 1 half times 10 times 5. All right. Now, I'm on question number 5. What is this? All right. So, here we go. Quickest way. Divide that. All right. So, in my opinion, I always just write down 8 equals 8 times 1 half. What's the base? I'm missing the what? The height. I'm missing the height. So 360 divided by 8 one divided five. by 2. two. Now, eventually you guys will just say, can I just do 360 five. divided by 16? Right? Oh, because you always divide by 8, and then you always what? Divide by 2 because you create this angle, which in this case would be 22.5 degrees. All right. Now, in my opinion, you should write down this is the height that you're looking for. And again, this is sometimes causes a problem. So I erase that and I put a five. But notice people make mistakes. So I put the 10 up there first before I alter the base. Are you hearing me? I 
put the base in. If I knew the height, I automatically put in the height into the formula. All right, because I'm going to alter it. All right. So now, again, I think this is the same principle, correct? Tangent. Tangent 22.5 is equal to 5 over what? 5 over H. You're correct. So now we look at it. Now here's what I want. Look up, look up, look up. Don't make that a proportion anymore. Look what I'm showing you. This <laughs> goes over here, and this goes what? Down here. You should be able to mentally do that now. So take 5 and divide it by tangent of 22.5. Tell me what that is. That goes in for the height. Times 10, times 10 divided by 2 times 8. I just don't understand the difficulty at all. I don't know. He didn't tell me an answer. So we say it's approximately what? I want to know what the answer is, Sam. 482.8 inches squared. Double check him, please. Yes, go. So you use tangent and cosine all the place, and then when you have to find the definition. Right, because some of them, like a square or an equilateral triangle or the hexagon, those are the ones that you can use radicals on. Okay. All right. All right, so here we go. Six. Didn't we already do a pentagon? Yeah. Yeah, now this one's really dumb because they give us the what? They gave us the base and the height. Right? They gave us the base and the height. So area equals 5 times 1 half times 10.9 times 7.5. All right? Whatever that answer is. All right? Now, uh, the next part of the lesson which again we're not going to uh, worry too much about, is, um, everybody go to question number one. You should be able to look at that and just say, and again, I, I am not kidding you. I am not kidding you. Well, I, I have these problems on my fifth, or not my fifth, my sixth grade test. All right? They're irregular shapes. All right, here we go. So here we go. So your area would simply be 34 times 15 plus. Now, again, I want the exact answer. So we say area is 510 plus. Now, hold up, hold up. We're trying to practice our mental math. 7.5 squared, all right, is a fraction 15 over 2. 15 squared over 4 pi square feet. <coughs> 15 over 2 squared. 15 squared is 225. Oh, so you need to square the top. Oh! <coughs> <laughs> That's when you were saying that 81. Yeah. I don't care what you do. All right, here we go. On number two. So I have what? Two parallelograms. Right? So it's just two times. Well, some of you guys who are brilliant just do 40 times 24 if you're thinking. All right, because the height of one would be what? 20. Oh, that's the height. Right? Would be 20. All right. All right, very good. So now, don't be fooled by this. All right, number three. Actually, there are two triangles. Correct. Yeah. I feel like there's two 
Everybody with me on this? Alright, so to me there are Oh, then you're already on. So right. So one half thirty-eight times fourteen plus one half ten times forty. Come on, keep going. Now, number four, you should recognize that is twenty over there. So we say twenty-two squared plus one half times 22 times 20. Come on now. Again, I, I, it sounds and looks sometimes easy, but you, you trust me, you got to try it. All right? Now, again, if you're unsure about something, we said it was a square, so all of these are 22. So then the height of the triangle would have to be 20. Whatever that is. Let's take a look at number five. So on number five, I'm looking at two what? Uh, two trapezoids. All right, we're looking at two trapezoids. What height times base So the height would be what? It's forty. It's thirty-five. Thirty. It's half and a thirty-five. Sorry. It's half and fifty-four. Now, if you think about it. Right? If you think about it this way, the, the trapezoids, does everybody agree those are the same exact trapezoid, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm if you go, to... listen, 2, and then the formula is 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height, right? Um, the 2 and the 1 half do what? Cancel out. Right, so it's just going to be 20 plus 40 times 32. All right. Might say 20. Thank you. Square meters. All right, here we go. Actually, you could say 35 times 15. Yeah, because there are two and the one half and the two. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm trying to get you to think about. Listen. Again, it's not so much that we're putting just the formulas out. It's that, I honestly, I think this is a good exercise for you to understand why things can be done quicker. All right? If you want, you could say area equals 2 times one, ha one half the base times the height. Do you agree? But the 2 and the 1 half cancel. Yes, ma'am. Okay, like I understand. Honestly, it makes sense. But... Well, you see that because the triangles are congruent. Do <laughs> you agree with that? Shh, shh, shh. Do you agree? Because again, they're parallel, so we could prove they're congruent. You know. Um, yes, um, actually you are 100% correct. So the height though, we wouldn't have said was 15. We say the height is what? Um, You're with me now? Right? So the height is actually 7.5. All right. 35 times 7.5. Oh my god, there's two and then we have the one half. Instead of doing the one half, then. Do you get that? No. Let me say it again. All right. So, this, the top triangle, would be 35 times 7.5 times one half. But there are two of them. That's just a triangle. No, they're both triangles. Okay, so you have two triangles. You do the same thing with both triangles. You get the area of both triangles. So it's two times the, the four 
formula, and then they cross out. Thank you. You feel my pain. Okay. I can't be teacher. Wow. So, again, what I want to do is. Yeah, here we go. Guys, look. Uh, here we go. The last two worksheets. All right. We're going to take a look at the last two worksheets. So, 11.4. Um, the practice, and then we got to do the ERBs. All right. So for the ERBs, we're going to do question number one, and this time question number five. Looks fun. One and five. Yes, ma'am. Can you look at on the? I know. I really went to yesterday. Eleven four. The seven one. It looks like it has the bite out now. Do you find the, uh, all the houses? Which one? Do you find the houses where someone's attracted? Which? Yeah. Number three? Sure. Yeah. Be a boss. Is that what you're doing? Hold on a second. Wait, oh. Watch out. Oh, wait, no, we did all the other ones. We held yeah. to go up. 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 Which one? All right, again, second worksheet one and five. What is that? 